Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. It's Friday then, it's Saturday, Sunday, hey! Ah, fuck's sake, yeah. Again, let's start again. <laughs> oh my god. There's a guy, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ready? Three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome to Play by Play Podcast, okay? My name is Ahmed Ibrahim, and we have got... Patrick Bergman. And the topic of today's discussion is how to increase your odds of becoming a professional football player. So, what's the first thing in mind, Patrick, when you're thinking, okay, based on what you've been through and what you think, okay, things that you wish you knew when you were younger? Oh, it's it's plenty of those. As uh, as we discussed earlier, the, there was the importance of having a mentor. I think mm. if you have a mentor you increase the odds significantly. If you have a mentor, you have a big chance of becoming a professional football player. 100%. The most important thing with that is to have luck. Like in the young age, you don't have the self, uh, self-view, self self-realization uh, to actually seek a mentor. You, you just need to have the luck. Either it's your parent or some, some coach or some scout. So it's it's a big part about having a luck. And what I would say as well is that, um, I don't know if you realise, but like a lot of these, um, like already made so football, like pro footballers, they they always say, oh yeah, it was my older brother. Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. Or they'd be like, oh yeah, it's because since I was young, I was playing with the older group all the time. Exactly. So they're always playing one, two, three years um, above their age group. And they're like going three to four times like ahead of the game to the point where like, by the time they go to academy and they play in their age group, the speed of play, the physicality, everything is like they're like ten times ahead of everyone. And it speeds your development really. Um so yeah, um, but again, it's finding that sweet spot not too much. Not too little. I find that sweet spot to elicit change and adaptation, and for you to kind of like push your game to the max. If I could give like one 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 sentence uh, sentence answer, I would say, go and play with the seniors as soon as possible while having a mentor. If you have mm. those, whew, seventy percent. I give you seventy percent that you will be a football player. Um, as well as that. I would say between zero and 14 years of age, technique. Just focus on technique. Don't don't, don't do anything else. Just focus on technique. That's one thing I wish I did. Um, technique and play a lot of games, whether it's street football, pick up games, just play as much as possible. The one thing that I see a lot that really boils my blood is this one-to-one uh, coaching culture at such a young age and I'm starting to think okay that's fine you do it once a week twice a week no problem what are they playing no this is their this is their this is their way of playing the one-to-one coaching on that that's the point so mm. you're learning the skill but you're not you don't know how to how to apply it or learn that decision making skill or or, or like learn how to implement it in like game like scenarios and um, match pace or stuff like that. Think from a young age, it's okay to do one to one coaching as a supplementary. That's okay, but as a, like your main course, I I completely one hundred percent disagree with that. And a lot of parents and a lot of um, young parents, especially when they, they just they just don't know. Um, getting their coaching, getting getting their kids to do coaching sessions out four, five times a week just because they've got the money. I'm like, that's no point. It's me. Like, 
So like me as as a as a private coach myself, uh, I say to to parents, please one session a week is max. Don't don't come two times. Don't come three times. One is enough. And so this is the supplement uh, to your kid's training. And the most important is that he plays, plays, plays as much as possible with the kids in school, mm -hmm. in uh, in training sessions, play games. Just have the ball with you all the time. A hundred percent. Um, I, it's, I just give them some sense of accountability. So, for example, when they're playing, the more you play, the more you find out what works for you, what doesn't, what you need to do, what you don't need to do. But if you're not testing yourself, how do you know what you're doing is working? How do you know all that hard work is putting into practice? You don't if you're not practicing it enough. Um, so... 100% just keep playing as much as possible and as much as you can and as frequent as possible. That's my advice for between 0 to 14. So I can I can give a good example. Uh, when I was living in Liverpool, I was training with Mick Clegg, a former Cristiano Ronaldo coach. And there was one Indian kid that was uh, that was training there five five times per week. He was training there every day for, for every day in a week for for I don't know two three hours. Sometimes he was doing even double sessions, and after three years, he his parents had a talk with a weak leg and saying that you promised my son will be a football player. Right now he's not even near that. So like they started blaming me, Clegg, that he is not professional. So I think people are doing that to blame others for not achieving the success for the child you get me mm. so uh yeah that was that was uh, that was very very intense talk you know I, I could hear that and, and the parents was just just like you promise my son will be like ronaldo you lied to me i spent so much money and you did not deliver on the results i will give you a bad mm. reputation but uh, mm. in fact uh, the, the client was just clueless but it's 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 one one mistake with Mick that he was also not telling to the to the parent. I listen, one time per week is enough. But this is what I mean. Like what I would say to that is, that goes to show you can have all the tools and all the knowledge and all the skill. Because that kid, I remember when I was in that session, that kid was smoking all of us. I don't know how he was just smoking us. Whether it be footy tennis, whether it be the sprint test, whether it be strength. Like, that guy was smoking all of us. It didn't make sense, right? Mm. But when you ask him, oh, well, how is it going on the weekend? Oh, I'm on the bench. What do you get in a minute? No. Then I'm like, it's not, mate, it's not adding mm. up. Mm. And, yeah, it's, a, it's good to be, have the knowledge, have the, um, the skill set, but it's all about application of that skill set. If you don't know how to apply it or don't have the... the adaptability and to, to deal with pressure to deal with like match pace to deal with like um mental pressure that he puts himself if he doesn't know how to deal with that then what's the point it's useless knowledge like, if you ask me so this is why i always say to people you need to learn how to assess the situation put yourself in these situation practice practice trial and error trial and error trial and error. before you know you're kind of implemented a blueprint that creates you as a player, that unique ability that makes you, and over time, that's how you develop your X factor in the game. Because you're thinking, okay, I'll take a bit of this, I'll take a bit of that, that's my bit of my game, bit of my game, and that what makes you that unique player, makes you stand out. Um, but if you're treating that as more like a robot, I'm gonna do A, B, C, A, B, C, and regimented, and there's no flow or there's no freedom in your play, and then how can you expect to kind of have that ability to kind of have that creativity on the pitch? You won't, because you're too regimented and you're too strict. So I would say the ideal example of a football player for me is Bellingham. This is how a player's career should, uh, should look like. I'm 100% sure it, it has been done deliberately. I'm 100% sure, like I heard that his, his father used to be a football player in the lower leagues in England. So I'm 100% sure he was on some project in Bapu or something. 100% mm. sure. So uh, because that's the, 
that's what you want. Like you want to play with the senior senior players as soon as possible. This guy was like training with the first team at the age of 14. So uh, Mm. that's what you want. It doesn't Mm. matter. It doesn't matter if you, if at the age of 14, you play in Real Madrid Academy or in, uh, I don't know, third division in Norway. For me, if you play third division in Norway at the age of 14, you're much better than a player in Real Madrid Academy. I can promise you that. Because the most important is to, for me, in my opinion, is to get to the first team as soon as possible. And what I would say to that as well is having that guidance and having that blueprint. You need to kind of differentiate. Are you playing for fun? Or are you playing to make a club? People need to differentiate the two. Like, are you playing because this is your purpose, this is your life? Or are you playing because I just want to play with my mates? Do you know what I mean? Differentiate the two. If you're playing for your mates, no problem with that. But you're never going to make sacrifices to kind of better yourself, if that makes sense. For example, I had a kid that I used to coach. Um, he had a trial for Everton. Came back crying. He's a hard blah, 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 blah. And what is it? Because they were just fasted a little bit. Physical, blah, blah, blah. But when it came to the technical drills, I was one of the best. But when it came to the game, I was just so slow, so behind. I was like, this is making the slow. Everything was slow. I just felt so behind. I think I'm never going to get there. I was like, all right, cool. Are you best? Are you the best in your junior league? Went, no. Do you play? Do you play in the best junior league in the whole city? No. Right. So you play in the best junior league, right? You're not the best team in that, and that's third to third best league in the whole city. You're not the best team in that third league. You're not challenging yourself. Why do you play there? Because oh, all my mates, all my mates play there. I'm like, okay. You're eleven years old. If you want to make that step up to play for the under 12s next year or the whatever, as you get older and you're going to secondary school, you need to make sacrifices. And that's another thing that I'd say, especially young players, they don't want to have that um fear of missing out. FOMO. Oh, I want to be with my friends. Oh, I want to, I don't know, I want to go to the corner shop, grab some sweets after the match with my friends. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want it's just that um, pleasure, if that makes sense. So, from a young age, you need to sacrifice. And you need to... And, um, and this is why we're saying having a strong blueprint and having a strong support system is so key. I don't know, Patrick, I don't know if you've even seen Dom- Dominic's uh, Shabbos Life documentary. No, no. It's... Oh, my baby. Even like... Um, I've seen Human Song. Yeah, documentary with the father. His dad made. <laughs> yeah. His same, dad made bro, bro, same thing with Odegaard. His father used to be a famous coach in Norway. Yeah, but his dad made him do juggling for four hours, and if he stops it, and then he has to do it again. Yeah. Uh, but like, um, the same with Dominic. Mm-hmm. Like, like from the age of ten, if he can. Um, go to junior league his dad was like no you're staying behind doing left foot right foot on ball wall left foot right foot left foot right foot left foot right foot volleys one one touch bounce blah 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 just left foot right foot and then technique shooting left foot right foot left foot right foot but the guy is like six foot two six foot three but the guy is massive huge right oh he's got the cleanest touch and the cleanest dribbling even in Germany, he's like one. I think he's in the team of the season. Bro, and he's like, what, 22, 23? Well, it goes to show like technique is technique above everything. I would say to everyone, technique above everything. Because if you have the technique, like the Trevella, on the inside foot, learn how to, to kind of clip a ball, low drive, high drive, left foot and right foot, you have much more tools to kind of execute that pass, to kind of get you out of that situation, to kind of get you um in a 2v1 situation or anything like that, really. The more tools you have, the more probability 
that you're going to have a successful dribble, successful pass, a successful um, shot on target working in your favour. Our audience is 18 to 32 years old. And uh, what would we say to them about, okay, Chain has left the station, you're 16, you're, you're past 16, you're not a professional football player, but can you still be? What advice would you give them? My advice would be giving them focus on four cornerstones of football. And you need to be the best version of them all before you step on the pitch, right? Or at least be on the pursuit of being the best version of yourself in that regard, okay? And then the bonus point is the key point, but without them four, it's really going to be hard to hit the, the fifth one. So four cornerstones, okay? So um, physical ability. I'm going to rank them in order. Right? Physical ability. That's the most easiest and the most non-negotiable that you need, okay? You need to be physically fit. You need to be physically quick. You need to, if you don't know how to, get a coach. Dead simple. Hit the gym. Do your spin session two times a week, okay? There's a lo there's loads of YouTube videos. There's a loads. There's loads of coaches out there. How you want you need to invest in yourself. That is non-negotiable. All that requires time and hard work. That is it, really. Okay. Number two. Okay. What I would say is understand the game. Understand the game. Is is watch football. Go to stadium. Watch the game. Go to the level that where you think it, you are. If you think you're non-league level, whatever. Watch them games. What's the requirement? What's the style of play? What do you need to do? That's simple, okay? Who do you want to replicate your game like? What's your style of play? If you're a fullback, are you an inverted fullback? Are you more of a fullback in the, in the final third? Do you need to underlap, overlap, um, overload the midfield? Whatever, right? Understand the game. That is the bare minimum. There's loads of YouTube videos, just loads of knowledge there. Go do your research. Number three, okay? Now, technique. Say that's everyone. All you need is a wall and a ball, okay? A lot of balls, okay? And a pitch. Don't need a lot of equipment, okay? Don't need fancy drills or whatever. Master your basic technique, okay? And number four, your mentality has to be A1. Non-negotiable. Because there's more lows than highs in football, but the highs is so high, that makes it worthwhile. Like, for, like, like, Harry Berg said, it's like an iceberg success. Underneath all that water is the iceberg. Underneath all that water, that's the struggle. Success is literally a tiny bit. Are you willing to go through all of that hardship and struggle just to get to that tip of the iceberg? Ask yourself that question. Sometimes you're gonna sometimes you're gonna have to miss family function. Sometimes you're gonna have to miss um going out with friends. Sometimes you're gonna have to miss going out on a, if you if you if you of all your friends go out on a nightclub, blah blah blah. Sometimes you're gonna have to be like, sorry, I need I've got a game tomorrow, blah blah blah. Sometimes you're gonna have to sacrifice seeing people and renew your circle because at the end of the day, if you don't outgrow your circle or your circle doesn't replicate your end goal, then you need to change your circle. Okay? And you need to have the mental resili resilience and discipline and consistency to keep working on all the three all the time. And then, only then, your train at 100%, your mental going to be at 100%, your nutrition is going to be at 100%, your tra your training in the gym and outside the gym on the pitch off the pitch going to be a hundred percent. Then the final bonus is performance. If you don't perform, this is what I see a lot. Tell me, Patrick, do you agree with me? You see a lot of people, especially in our circle, they do all the four. 
but when it comes to actually transforming into performance, there's not a lot of people can do it. It's like this uh, this uh, videos with Jimmy. You know, Jimmy is always doing the opening the gates in the dressing room, and he's still <laughs> on the bench. <laughs> so uh, that's the thing. Like, if you don't put pressure on yourself, like it's okay not to become a professional at least. The journey, the journey is the success. So at least you you gave your all. So like mm. uh, like if you if you if you look, there is like one graph that is going this way and then is suddenly dropping down, and that's uh, that's from uh, six to eighteen. That's all the people playing football, and then suddenly it drops after the age of eighteen, and these small bits of players uh, are left. Mm. So uh, I would say also have the resilience. Because you will have less competition, but this competition will be better. So if you, if you, as you said, work on those uh, four plus bonus one uh, fundamentals, for a few years it doesn't happen overnight. But for a few years, it uh, you you might be a football player. You know, who who knows? Like yeah. it's it's written in the stars at the end. So yeah. uh, just just as I said, the journey is the success. Everything you learn on the way is the success. That's mm. that's like my take on it. But also, to add from myself, I would say uh, don't take much responsibilities on yourself. So like 18 to 32, the responsibilities will be getting more and more and more and more. Suddenly you get a kid. Suddenly you get, you get a girlfriend, a wife, a house, a mortgage, a f new new car. You need to take credit on the car because mm. uh, Ma Matrix is calling you that and telling you that. So uh, yeah, don't take don't, don't take many responsibilities on yourself in in this crucial eighteen to thirty two age. It's not like you did not become a professional football player at the age of uh, sixteen. You should give up. No, just just keep on going. It's as I said, it's written in the stars. Yeah, but I would say to that as well is. Have actions that work in your favor. So every action that you do, just ask yourself: Is this gonna be? Is this gonna do well for my dream? Is this gonna put me in a good spot? Is this gonna uh, increase my probability of making it? That's what how you should assess your actions and take responsibility on. And take ownership and accountability. Um. Number two, regardless of the outcome, and regardless of anything, I say this to everyone, but it's a harsh reality. Everything is your fault, even if it's even if you it wasn't you that did it. Everything is your fault. For example, if you have a bad manager, or the manager not giving you a chance. It's your fault. Maybe you rushed the deal. Maybe you didn't assess the question. Maybe you didn't uh, question the manager. Maybe you didn't do your research properly. But when now when you're doing your research, you're being like, <laughs> no wonder the manager is an idiot. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's been bouncing every club every six months as well. Um, again, like, take responsibility. That's what I would say. Ask yourself questions. Um, in terms of performance Patrick what do you think players can do say if they're doing all the four cornerstones right because that's what's in their control what's the thing because obviously the performance is obviously there's so many controllable variables and uncontrollable un uncontrollable variable what's the one controllable variable players can do to maximise their performance on the pitch where it matters mindset you can control your mindset like be prepared like the simple stuff the discipline like shake hand firmly things like that just the simple stuff this is what you can control and this will improve your performance as well just your mindset because if you can really play football and you still cannot play football because of bad performance, 
it's because of your brain it's the mindset that is holding you back some it depends on the person but uh, in many cases you need to convince yourself you're good enough and how do you convince yourself that you are good enough we are training mm. you need to train much so you can convince yourself that you are actually a good player that's what i found out on the way mm. one of the most important things on the pitch is to show that you're confident that the manager is putting you on and he can trust you and you appear confidently on the pitch but again how you become confident you convince yourself that you are actually doing the things that you are talking about some are reading something and somebody said at work is self doubt yes correct is, uh, and confidence comes from being competent and competence comes from your ability to trust yourself to do something because you've done it over and over and over and over again and that's the only way and that comes both physically and mentally physically you're doing through the actions and training everything like that okay this is why I, I get this a lot of questions like a lot of players going oh bro like why is it my, on, on training I'm the best player but on the game day I'm uh, struggling I'm not that's because you the difference is in pressure in training you're not bothered whether you make a mistake or not but in the match because people are watching now if you're putting extra pressure on yourself. Um, so, might not start a visualisation. That's what I told them. Just put background noise of people call your names and people roaring. Just close your eyes and just replicate these scenarios that you're doing training, but try and do it in that background noise and that background environment. Try and learn how to block it out and be in the flow zone. Just like you're doing physical repetitions, just do mental repetition, positive self talk, affirmative language, and just repeat, repeat, repeat. That's all you can do. Um, what I would say is make sure that you're in the level that you're playing is not overly excessively difficult. Just play one level above your level that's what i would say to everyone either your level or one level above your level that's what i would say and that's how you can improve and that's how you can show your ability here i need to add something for myself uh, many players uh, i hear that from some agent many players think they are much better than they are in reality you need to understand that you you are the person that has been through all the trainings, all the doubts, all the overcoming failure, all the success as well. The person outside, he's just looking at you at the moment. He doesn't know anything about you. He's just judging on your performance on how it is. So like in your head, you will always appear much better than in reality. Of course, you can, you can act a bit and just, uh, if you play good, then somebody will say, why wow, this player is good. But they don't know that you had embarrassing games. The games that you you were the worst player on the pitch, the games that you the, the coach substituted you on and then he had to take you off because you were so bad. Don't think that you are the best player in the world. If you're not, like, think about it inside your head it's the best advice i gave to i gave to everyone no one knows your inside story so in reality no one owns you anything nobody owes you like, anything at all so the minute you stop having an expectation that's all it is unmanaged expectation within yourself and within other people the managers coaches agent whatever the minute you stop having any of these um unresolved expectations it's the minute you start to put less pressure on yourself and it's the minute that you start to perform i promise you i would say tell your story as well tell your story to others so they can understand like uh, i have a coach now that uh, he really appreciates my story. So like he heard about me being a center back and just converting to striker eight months ago. And he loves the story. And he that's why he's giving me more chances. That's why he believes in me.
because he loves the story. And I'm sure if he would not know the, not know the story, he would just say, no, not good enough. So uh, I, I said this a few podcasts ago, but uh, you need to have the ability of telling your story. So like many times people ask you, who are you? Just just make up, make up a story that you can tell them. That is, of course, true. But be interesting. Say that, oh, this is my background. And somebody will say, oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. If you vetted the right manager, that's a fantastic thing to do. But if you haven't vetted and chose the right manager to play for, <laughs> that's a lost cause. I'm on the line. <laughs> Most of them don't care. Do you know what I mean? But again, everything is your fault. I say it's everyone. It's your ability to kind of um, vet the manager and be like, yeah, this, that's the manager's right for me. And that's why I always say to players, stop letting managers ask you so many questions. How about from once you can ask them questions back as well? Just like they're vetting you out, you can vet them out as well. Okay? And if any manager has any... um feel some type of way I'm like why is he asking a question you already know he's a horrible man to do it right their reaction alone paints a bigger picture than their words I promise you I would also give give like a life hack uh, when you have the job interview and, and the interviewer ask you any questions never say no I don't have always ask a question like I heard it was a statistic that the people that asked the question had a higher percentage of, of getting the job than the ones that said no, no question. Ask mm. questions. A hundred percent. Or even when it negotiating contracts, <laughs> they'd be like, How much do you want? I mean, like, oh what and I asked them, Oh yeah, um, even whether it be a job or football or whatever, I'd be like, Oh yeah, what's the range? What's the range for this job? And then um, and they be like, no, no, no. What do you want? I'm like, no, no, no. What's the range? Because normally by law you need to tell me on a job subscription now. This is the range. They be like, oh yeah, fair enough. The range is is between this and this. And I'm like, thank God I asked them because I was gonna go lower. Now I'll be like, mm. yeah, I deserve the um the upper end of that range. They be like, oh yeah, fair enough. By law they have to. Do you know what I mean? So mm. but if you're if you're quiet or nervous, you're like, oh, I don't want to come across that. You don't believe it. And present yourself that way and prove it as well. Okay? That's what I would say. You need to know how to deal with people. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. What I could add to, to our talk, uh, we have three minutes left, but I could add... Uh, connections so many times you hear oh yeah but i don't have connections bro you make the connections you go mm. and ask that's your connection you go and speak to people you you go and put yourself in the rooms that's your connection mm. you don't sit on your ass on instagram and uh, dm uh, random uh, football players say can you fix me a child in uh, in your team no you First of all, you, you make a highlight video, you play good, then you can send to to teams. Mm -hmm, 100%. And it's, a, it's all about, like I said, is like setting yourself up for success, really. Uh, make sure you have a good highlight video, make sure you have a good stat, make sure you, good, you have a good CV, make sure you have a good reference, make sure... And it's all good and well, like um, messaging them on LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever it may be, Twitter, whatever it may be. It's all good and well. But if you don't have the um, resources or the, the um, CV or the highlights to kind of show for it, then it, all the effort that you're doing to network, it's just going to waste. Another thing, like you've seen Brandon Dow, Bandal. Mm. My guy's flying to the buy, knocking on uh, private facilities, going to have a trial, and then he plays for Vega FC on a trial, plays two games, blah blah. Yeah, he wasn't good enough to kind of play play at that level or 
or they didn't think that he's good enough or whatever it is, game of opinions. But the fact that he got a chance speaks volume. You know, like just do it the old way. Knock on clubs, maybe go for a match. If it's done Lee, go watch a match, stay behind, speak to the manager. Blah blah and be like, Yeah, can I come down? Blah blah and be like, Yeah, that's all but some of them some of them appreciate it. It's a numbers game. If you do that enough times, I promise you one or two will be like, Yeah, yeah come down. And then they see ability, but you've got to back it because you don't want to be the bad egg that roams around the lane. Because if you do this so many times and you're not performing, managers will know, certain managers will know in the future, oh yeah, it's that, it's that trialist kid, that, it's that bad egg kid, it's the kid that bounces from team to team. You don't want to be that guy. And that's mm. why it's really important. First impression is really important. So impress, perform, and repeat, and just keep doing that. And I promise you, once you put your name out there, and they're performing, people talk. Because performance bring money and money talks. Simple as that. Yeah, that's what I would say is uh, try to have as much people as possible knowing your name in a positive way. Oh, yeah, this is this guy. Okay, yeah. He's good. Yeah. Heard about him. Yeah, good, good. You don't want that. Ah, this is this. Uh, try this guy. You want people to, to raise their eyebrows when they hear your name. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, is it this Ahmed guy? Yeah, good, good. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.